In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the cluster ray host to determine lumbar segmental instability. <music> Amongst patients with aspecific low back pain, one group that can be identified are patients with lumbar segmental instability, abbreviated as LSI. The symptoms of this group are very diverse and are described differently in the literature. This cluster introduces a test battery that can be used to identify patients with LSI. It was published in 2006 by Ray Horst and it consists of four different tests. Unfortunately, little is known about their validity. The first test in the cluster is the so-called posterior-anterior spring test. Although this test is only medium to low reliability to determine the degree of mobility, it can be used to determine which patients could possibly benefit from a stability training. According to Cook et al. in 2006, pain provocation during the PA spring test could be a sign for LSI. To perform the test, have your patient in prone lying position and give PA pressure to different lumbar levels. What you are looking for is simply pain provocation. The second test is a so-called prone instability test. This test has an almost perfect inter-rater reliability according to Higgs et al. in 2003 and 2005. To perform this test, have your patient in prone lying position with his legs hanging off of the table but still in contact with the ground. Then apply a specific PA pressure on different lumbar levels. What you are looking for is pain provocation. Now in the second part of this test, ask your patient to lift his legs off of the table and apply the same PA pressure again. Again, you are looking for pain provocation. If your patient experiences pain during the passive situation, which he doesn't experience during the active part of this test, this means that an active segmental stabilization of the lumbar musculature takes place. In case of a positive test, patients usually respond well to a stabilization program. The third part is designed to test for generalized ligamentous laxity. This can be done by taking the Baden score. To watch the video, click on the info card in the top right corner. Another option is to perform the straight leg raise test. An outcome of greater than 90 degrees is a great predictor of a successful stabilization program. The fourth part is to look for aberrant motions. Ask your patient to flex his spine and to extend it again. Different authors describe that pain during the movement to flexion and back to extension, the presence of the Gauer sign, which is when patients need their hands to come up into extension again, sudden accelerations, or decelerations during the movement, a deviating lumbopelvic rhythm, lateral flexion or rotations during the movement can all be indicative for LSI. Unfortunately, Rayhorst does not describe any specific number of tests that have to be positive to determine LSI, so our advice is to use this test battery with caution. If you see a patient for whom a good chunk of these tests are positive, consider that a stabilization program might be beneficial for him. At last, please don't create a nocebo. So don't tell your patient something like, oh your back is unstable, or I think you have segmental instability at L4, L5, which will only create fear in your patient. So rather tell him something like, hey, I see a good chance that you might benefit from a strength or stability training. If you guys want to learn more about test clusters, check out the cluster of Leslet or Van der Werf to determine the involvement of the SI joint in low back pain. And as always, I hope you found this video interesting. Let us know your opinion in the comments. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our channel. I see you next time. Bye.